My friend Greg was the fourth person I had lost in the space of a year. It was his death that got me angry. The epidemic that I'd been hearing about finally felt real to me. Greg was a dear friend to both Garrett and I. Kind and always a source of fun, but someone who struggled with the disease of addiction. We couldn't leave Texas without visiting his grave. I don't think it really hit me that he was dead until we went to the meeting with Taylor and yeah. she broke down in tears in yeah. the meeting because yeah. I was numb to it still at that point. So many people, like so many people, and, like you kind of get numb to it, clean or sober. I've never done that visit before, yeah. you know, I'd never like felt it with other people, let alone myself, you know. The crazy thing about Greg dying was is like we were so used to people dying yeah. at that point and I mean, we talked about it it was a thought and it was like a lot of people talking about another one down and like you know it was it was so impactful but I don't think we talked about it or like the community like none of us really talked about it it was just kind of like almost expected yeah. in a sense because it was happening so often right it didn't actually hit until I saw the name and the, you know like I could have been dead multiple times. I have been and been brought back and it's like, why? Why did he not wake up and I have? Or why Why have you woken up and, and all of us woke up and and, and uh, a lot of people don't. I pictured my mother burying me, which was very possible multiple times and my sister dropping off flowers and an and energy drink on my gravesite or something, you know, like, and I used to say when I was actively, you know, using, like, leave me alone, I'm only hurting myself, and that is so far from the truth, like, he, he, you know, if I would have died, like, a lot of people would have been affected. The hardest call that I made this entire trip to, like, talk about what we're doing, and, you know, it was to Greg's mom. It's easy to hear the statistics and forget that they represent someone's daughter, someone's son, someone's best friend or partner, a father or a mother. Um, my son Kevin was similar to many of the uh, people affected by this uh, public health crisis. He was um, born in a, and raised in, in some uh, bucolic suburban environments of the Washington DC area. Um, he had all of life's blessings. He was um, active in all the things that young people are. He was a very good student, went to the University of Virginia and graduated in 2010. Shortly thereafter, he went to Hollywood and worked in a series of film production jobs. While there in California doing some of that work, he began experiencing issues with depression and anxiety and unbeknownst to us he began augmenting self-medicating with oxycontin a very powerful um, opioid drug elisif was an incredibly talented artist anything she touched with any medium always with full heart and full engagement she was also very smart and was very good at hiding things so we had no idea throughout high school of our three daughters elisif was the one we didn't have concerns about. It wasn't until college that things fell apart and at first we didn't know why. And of course she wasn't coming to us to let her know that her that she'd been introduced to Oxycontin and had become addicted to it and that everything was falling apart. Um, it took her little sister to coming to us and telling us what was going on. And that set us off on a five-year roller coaster ride. And as so many people in our situation are, when we first learned the news, all we felt was fear. You talk about these four people in the last six months, but you go back, you know, five years, and I couldn't even tell you how many people have been dead. I mean, yeah, it won't go on. You lose count. I mean, that's what. I mean, that's what kind of got me angry. I know it got. You know, yeah. Got you I angry. think what makes me more angry, and it, it didn't happen until I personally entered recovery, is that 
people don't have to die. Like, there is a solution, and they just need a little bit of help. When I was there, like, and I'm looking at his name, you know, not to think, you know, like, seeing, like, what if it was your name? You know? Or, like, my name? Or, like, you know, what if it was, like, Mikey or somebody like that? You know, Greg meant a lot to us. But, like, I think that, like, I could see all these other names there. And that, you know, made it even more important yeah. what we're doing. I just don't want to have to keep burying my friends. So Ellis have turned to a friend, Sean, who who mailed her drugs in the mail because Ellis was at a place where she didn't know where to get drugs. So Sean helped her out and sent her drugs. And um, in the meantime, my wife and I thought Ellis was doing great. And then we got the phone call. How do I, how do I even have words for that? I can't have words for that. It was quite a shock to us that he, he was struggling with addiction. Um, and the journey itself, uh, unlike some others, was not protracted. Um, it was about a, a 13, 14, 15 month journey from dependence, addiction, and, and an unintended uh, overdose. With a really big So it was and my brother uh, Adam the initial Dan emotion that we just passed away so and, and, and I lost my nephew Scott in 2005 to a prescription drug overdose. Ever since then, what I miss most about has been the same. Smile. 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 Smile.